Hello everybody, uh, this is a harness for a uh, conversion specialist of ours, that's Crest Motorsport. Uh, this is a 1UZ FE VBTI, uh, it's going into a Datsun pickup truck. So in this case we have completely rebuilt the harness and the reason we've done that is because we have fitted an Autosport firewall connector on this one. So obviously the pickup truck has the ability to remove the body off of the chassis. So we wanted to be able to basically disconnect the entire engine from the actual car itself. So in this case, we can do that. So we've used the Autosport connector there that's gonna mount onto the firewall. So as pretty standard with all the harnesses that we build, uh, all covered in heat shrink, all considerably twisted. Uh, everything is labeled, so it's nice and easy to fit on. Okay, so again, you can watch those of our videos, there's plenty of that. We will put pictures at the very end as well, so if you wanna see what it looks like all inside, Wait till the end and you'll see that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to carry out the testing for this particular harness to make sure it's all 100%. And so I'm going to go to my little testing sheet here. So to start off with, uh, while the engine's not running, we're going to do the dash lights, uh, OBD2, make sure that's working, and the fuel pump. Obviously, I've gone through all of this, so I'm just going to show this on the video now. Then what we're going to do is we're going to fire it up, and then we'll be able to test the drive-by-wire. We're going to test the VBTI solenoids. So we'll go into tech stream and we'll actually activate them so we make sure they're both working. Uh, we'll test the tack. So we've got a little cluster to work with that. Uh, then I'm gonna go around and unplug all the injectors one by one just to make sure that you, they are all working 100% correctly. Uh, the starter, well, pretty self-explanatory. If the engine fires up, we know the starter's okay. The ACIS or acoustic control induction system, that's this little valve over here. So effectively it's in the up position now so all the valves are open. Okay, there's plenty of videos on the acoustic control induction system. It's a variable intake rudder length, you know how it works. Um, and then basically when it fires up, it should close down. So we'll check and make sure that that's okay. Then we'll go through and we'll check all the codes on the um, ECU to make sure that all the gearbox codes are, are gone, apart from SL and SLT and SLU, because they don't cause a check engine on, don't affect performance. So let's go over to the fuse box quickly. And we'll go through all of that. So. This is a manual. As you can see, we've got no gearbox wiring at all from here. Okay, so this is the fuse box, all completely separate. You've got one plug that goes into the ECU to control the body functions. You've got one section that's coming up here and going into the firewall connector, okay? So that's all relatively straightforward. We've got our Atomu device, or automatic transmission emulator. So that's obviously taking care of all the codes for the gearbox for us. And getting onto the actual customer plugs, this is the one that the customer's actually connecting to their vehicle. So you've got uh, two, two, two wires which are red with a blue. Now that's a permanent 12 volt supply. Make sure permanent, not ignition. Uh, this is the gray one, it's a fuel pump. So that's gonna supply 12 volts for your fuel pumps because the fuel pump is controlled by the ECU. Again, I've got another video on how fuel pumps are controlled with Lexus and Toyota systems. So again, feel free to go back and watch one of those. Uh, now getting onto the rest of the plugs here. Obviously, we've got uh, things that you require inside the vehicle. So starting from this side, we've got pink and a blue, and that is your alternator light. So at the moment, I've got two LEDs hooked up to oil pressure and alternator light. So that's just to obviously figure out that they're all working. So when we put the ignition on, you'll see the alternator light come on. Obviously, the oil light is on because I'm giving it a permanent 12 volts and the oil pressure switch is always earthed. So that's fine. Helps me differentiate between which one is the oil and which one is the alternator. Now then, yellow with a black, Oil pressure switch, straightforward, take it to an LED or a light, it provides a ground, awesome. Then you've got yellow, which is tack, so that's why it's connected up to here, which is connected up to our dash. We've got yellow with a red, that's check engine light, and that again is hooked up to our dash, so we're gonna see the check engine light on here. Um, as per usual, the LED that's inside the fuse box, that is also a check engine light, so we do fit those, so we, so if you guys want to start the engines like on benches like we're doing here, you don't have to worry about, oh, I've got to hook up the check engine light to see if it's turning on, etc. It's all inside there for you. We've also added the ability to read um, check engine codes via the old-fashioned like Morse code flash system. So that's what this little open space is here. It's not a fuse. Um, when you bridge that, it puts in the diagnostic mode. There are quite a few things that you can do in diagnostic mode. I've got a couple of videos on that, things like checking the timing. So if, if that's obviously bridged with a fuse, it locks the timing at 10 degrees. So don't leave a fuse in there when you're driving, otherwise you're gonna feel a, a severe lack of power. Okay, so the welcome pack will obviously come with exactly what all of these relays do, what all of these fuses do, and what amperage they should be. So that's all fine. So again, that's pretty much it from this. It's literally the 
two main powers, there's permanent 12 volts, grey is fuel pump, you've got all the indication stuff, so red, um, sorry, yellow red check engine light, yellow tack, pink and blue is alternator light, and yellow and black is oil pressure light, okay? The only other two that are left over now is your black with your red, so that's your ignition 12 volts, okay? And you've got your black with your yellow, and that's your 12 volt starter signal. So. These are literally just triggering relays, so they don't need to be a thick wire. Uh, you can use 22 gauge, 24 gauge, 20 gauge, whichever one, it doesn't really matter, it's not taking any load. Uh, same with this, this is just triggering a relay. Ah, nearly forgot. White with a blue, that is a clutch switch, so effectively that is the ground side of the starter relay. So if you want, you can connect that to a clutch switch, other side of the clutch switch to ground, that'll stop the vehicle from being able to fire unless the clutch is pressed in. It's just. It's on modern cars. I like to throw it in. It's one wire. It's not a major issue. Uh, and if you have a clutch switch, hey, cool. Uh, right. So if not, you can just connect it straight to earth. No dramas. Okay. Obviously, we've got OBD2 hooked up as well. So we've got our little text stream machine over here. Obviously, it's not communicating because it's not on. So basically, just a run through for now. I'm going to put the ignition on. When I do that, we're going to check the check engine light coming on. We're going to check the LED coming on here. We're gonna check the second LED coming on there for the alternator uh, light. And obviously you'll be able to communicate via the text stream. So bear with me a second while I do that now. All right, so I've put the black with the red to 12 volts. Lo and behold, there's a check engine light. There's a check engine on the dash, so I know that wire works correctly. And now if I go into here. So, okay, there you go. So, just going to go system select, just so you can see. So there it is, LS400. All right, going to go back into that. Okay, going to go into data list. So here we'll be able to see that obviously we're communicating properly. So you see we've got coolant temp. Obviously I've been running it, so it's 59 degrees. Intake air temp, 24 degrees. Throttle position, 16%. Idle signal on, etc., etc. So happy with that. We know that all works as it should do. So what I'm going to do is move along to here, and both our LEDs are on. So I know my oil light works, I know my alternator light works, I know my check engine light works. Happy with all of that. So as I said, the fuel pump is controlled by the ECU. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here. So I've got my fuel pump in my thingy. And hopefully, if I come nice and close. And you should hear the relay click in there. Okay, so happy with the fuel pump. The ECU is able to control the fuel pump. Obviously I've started it, so I know that's all correct. So what we're gonna do now is, I'm gonna put my ear defenders on, because it's got no exhaust and it's very loud. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire it up. Now obviously you're not gonna be able to hear much once I fire it up. So just a quick recap of what we're gonna do. We're gonna test the drive-by-wire. So we're just gonna be literally, okay, I can hear it's working there already, so that's fine. Uh, we're going to jump on the tech stream, test the VVTI solenoids, make sure they're working. So what you're going to hear is that it basically throws the cams massive advance and you're going to hear the engine sound like a lumpy cam, it's like blah, 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 blah. And then when I go off, it'll go back to being smooth again. All right. Once I've done that, as part of the injectors and coils test, I'm just going to pull each injector out one by one, just so you can see it's misfiring as I do that. So we know all eight cylinders are firing correctly. Uh, starter self-explanatory. ACIS, once I started, I'm just going to lean over here and have a look over here and you're going to see that this is going to move to the down position. Then we know the ACIS system is working. Okay. And then obviously we'll go over to the tech stream and we'll check all the codes out. So bear with me while I put my earmuffs on. Okay. So nice and simple. Black with a yellow wire, supply 12 volts and she'll fire up. So one, two, three. Okay, there she goes. So you can see our ACIS valve has turned over. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into the oil control valve to test the BBTI solenoids. So we're gonna do bank one. Again, you should get a rough idle. Okay, let's go to bank two. And again, rough. 
rough idle. Okay, so that, that'll test it up. Obviously we've got no check engine light while she's running, so we're happy with that. We've got our battery voltage nice and high, so we know the alternator is charging. So let's start. We're going to start with injector 7. So, what I was trying to capture there, obviously the ACAS valve has gone back up again. So, these little devices at the back of each fuel rail, these are fuel pulsation dampeners, they're not regulators. So what you would have noticed as I was going through is these screws would have raised up as we have fuel pressure. So it's a really nice indicator if you've got fuel pressure. If you take these off, be very careful because there's two washers underneath here and they can only go one way. If you go the other way, you're going to block the fuel actually getting into the rail. So just to check that, just to make sure you are correct. I think the top ones have little sort of cutouts, four little cutouts in them, and the bottom ones are like a solid. So obviously the cutouts allow the fuel to come up, push up against the dampening force, and then through this into the rail, and then obviously the rails are joined at the back via that metal line over there. Okay, so don't turn these screws. It's not going to do anything. You're just going to end up breaking the fuel pulsation damper for that. All right? Uh, so obviously one uz VVTi. I know it's got a cable, but it is drive-by-wire. This isn't actually connected. Now, Calvin, um, or my friend Calvin Glover from Cartoon, he's got loads of videos on these throttles. Uh, so you can go pick on one of his videos, and he'll show you exactly how it works, um, and that it is drive-by-wire, even though there's a cable on. So that's all fine. Okay, so uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I've gone through everything over there. We don't have any codes when we're running the engine. The check engine light does go off. Okay, the codes that we do have are always going to be there, um, well, apart from the oxygen sensor. This is a custom build, so he's got custom exhaust, so these don't reach into the standard position. So I've plugged in this one Lambda sensor over here, uh, just so they can get rid of one code, and then this one is dangling there. So you could see oxygen sensor bank uh, 1 sensor 1 was showing, bank 2 sensor 1 wasn't showing, and then the secondary oxygen sensors, uh, they're showing a code, but they don't affect performance, and luckily they don't cause a check engine light. And in terms of the gearbox, the only code showing is the SLN, SLU, and SLT solenoids. Uh, again, we don't remove them on European ECUs because they don't affect performance and they don't cause a check engine light. So the idea is we want to make sure that you guys have a harness where the check engine light does its job. And when the light comes on, that's when you know that there is actually a fault to look at. Uh, interestingly, though, uh, if the oxygen sensors, the main oxygen sensors don't work for some weird reason, it doesn't throw a check engine light. Don't know why, American ones do, American ones throw a check engine light for SLN, SLU and SLT. So they just made different changes for the variations as you go from there. Okay, uh, so yeah, uh, pretty happy with this one. Um, really nice firewall connector. Uh, so these are the firewall connectors that we'll be using on our modular harnesses. So as soon as we get those done for the one UZ non-VVTi, and we'll be looking to do ones like this for the VVTi, so that you guys can have a harness that you don't need to unplug everything, and then we'll have all of the you know, injectors and coils and everything as a separate harness. Uh, but we will be getting feedback from you guys because for instance, like we haven't really seen people change the coils. Um, the only thing I would say is these 1UZ VVTi coils are kind of like, a, 
one of the only parts that I've come across that Toyota only used on one vehicle. So these can be pretty hard to come by, whereas the 3UZ coils are the same coils that came in an IS200. So we might consider when we make the modular harnesses for VVTIs, 1UZ VVTI specifically, to change over to the 3UZ coils. And then injectors, definitely not a sub harness because you guys will want to change those, but the coils have been known to make large horsepower without needing to change. So that may be something we don't put on a modular harness, but we'll go through all of that. So anyway, uh, 15 minutes long, quite a long video, I do apologize. But yeah, nice and simple. You can see how it all works. Four wires to connect. Bob's your uncle, done. And we get everything working as it should. So you should have a nice uh, pain-free experience and everything is labeled so you can get it fitted in. So. Stick around, we'll put some photos on the end so you can watch it. Uh, I do apologize, I still haven't figured out how to put music on YouTube yet. I'm still a newbie, bear with me. Um, I will eventually get around to that. But that is it. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, if you guys want any information, again, same story as every time, write something in the comments. Find us on Facebook, Phoenix Engine Management. Uh, you can send us a message and we'll get back to you as soon as you possibly can. But thanks for watching, guys, um, and we'll speak to you soon and see you again. Cheers. Bye.